Hi, I'm Ian. And I'm Jason. And this is Ghosts and Bears, the only podcast where we bring you the actual ghost stories with the actual history in the actual place. On this episode of Ghosts and Bears, we're heading far, far east, in Canada at least, all the way to New Brunswick, where we're going to hear a very special episode of A Ghost in My House, New Brunswick. All right, well, here we are. We are going to be doing a very special and weird episode. Yeah, it's a little unique. Ghosts and Bears. We're doing Ghosts in My House. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the first time, we're not at the house, and that's because it is literally across the country. On the other side of the country, yeah. Yes. So I've told this story before on um, a different podcast, but uh, I wanted to really give you the whole story. And um, Jason hasn't really heard the whole story before, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. he's going to be uh, checking in for clarifying points. But let me paint you a picture. Um, it is the early 90s, Jason's favorite era for music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My, <laughs> I listen to a lot of, if I'm, I'm working in accounting from home, dance mix, like 92, 93, 94. Thing, with names like Club Cuts with a K and a Z oh, in, the, in the words. Those are, yeah, it's, it's a ridiculous guilty those, pleasure. Those are more your favorite kinds. Club Cuts. Club Cuts. Volume 6. Dance Hits with a Z. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so we're talking 92, 93. Um, I had been in Toronto for two years and uh, doing um, my education at the Bible school I was going to to be a youth leader. Mm-hmm. And um, then I was being shipped off to the wilds of New Brunswick and I was going to be the county youth worker just outside of St. John. I'm not going to get super specific on locations because if you know the area at all, you're going to know exactly which house I'm talking about. So, mm-hmm. so I get there. Um, I have no money. I have nowhere to live. They have done nothing to prepare for me. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, they're basically like, well, we thought the, the um, priest and his wife were like, well, we thought you could sleep on the couch and then we'll find you somewhere to live. I'm like, just make it work. Awesome. Okay. Nice. So luckily I had quite the spirit of adventure back then. Now I'd just be annoyed. But um, I'm like, okay, well, I, I know no one in the province. I've never been, you know, east of Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just see what happens and see where it goes. Was that when you had your Gulf diesel? <clears throat> I had my Gulf 1986 Gulf diesel. That didn't come till later because, again, I had no car. Oh, okay. Oh, I had nothing. Oh, wow. So I get there, and um, a very nice family took me in um, periodically. Uh, It turns out I ended up staying there more than the house I ended up living in. So thank you, Stephanie (laughs) Um, and and her family. Um, But there I was, and the first thing the priest says to me is, oh, I think I have a line on, you know, a place for you to live. So I was staying with this other... Um, family who were in a different town in the same county and I have to be honest with you it was really terrible oh gosh oh my gosh Uh, everything about it was terrible I can't even tell you so everything about it was terrible as I said Um, it was a real nightmare they were not nice to me they were not happy that I was there and I was a bit stuck I didn't have a car how was I supposed to do anything so I basically begged my dad for money, mm-hmm. and he gave me enough money to buy the magical '86 diesel Golf. Oh, that's nice. Yes, um, and then I had my freedom for a short time, on and off, because the car kept breaking. But that's another story. Um, but I really, really, really needed to get out of there, and everybody knew it who were friends in my life. They're all like, "Yeah, this isn't good for you. We get it. This is not a good place for you to be." Which color Golf? Uh, champagne. Ooh, that's yeah. actually classy. Oh, it was a classy. I anyway, do like those. Don't get hung up on the card. Not the point of the story. <laughs> I know. Um, so one day, uh, I guess I'd been there about maybe two months and um, still no money, no income um, at this point. Although one of the ladies in the other church had taken up 
basically taken up my cause and the ladies auxiliary was giving me money every month bless their hearts oh that's fun well it's the only way i could put gas in the car like i I literally had nothing and um they heard of this house that was owned by someone who was away in another country working um and they were always trying to rent this house and they could just never get anyone to stay in it Mm -hmm. that should have been a clue that's fair so they said do you want this house they're basically willing to give it to you um you know, you got to pay a little bit of rent, but not a lot. Pay with your soul. <clears throat> yeah, as it turned out. Um, so I, I'm like, yes, yes. Anything is better than where I am. So I pack up my meager belongings into the what, Jason? The Gulf. The champagne. Gulf. A champagne 86, colored. 86. 86. Diesel Gulf. And um, I move on. And uh, my first sight of the house, I'm coming along the highway and then there's just a straight shot. So if you're driving up the highway, on the left is the ocean. Yep. And you, I mean, literally, like I could huck a rock into the ocean from oh, the highway. Wow. And on the right, straight up, a, a sort of a banking hill, like a big, basically a grass bank, um, you can see this house. It is a kilometer long straight driveway. Holy smokes. And you can see the whole thing from the highway. So it's not hidden. Oh, wow. Behind the house... There are some pretty serious forest uh, and hills behind the house. So you're kind of basically on this very smallish strip of land between the ocean and the forest. That is cool. Yeah. The house itself is this old um, New England style. It's basically just a big square. And they would run the chimney up the center of the house. And that would be your fireplace in the uh, kitchen as well as in the living room. So Mm -hmm. that makes the most sense, the most usefulness. Um, You'd go in the house through the back door, which was now, there was an extension to the house, um, about quite a larger kitchen and sort of sitting area, maybe a dining room. That's cool. Yeah, and there's a basement you went into through the kitchen, which originally was a cellar you went down into separately. You'd have to open the doors and go into the cellar from the outside. And then you would walk through one of two doors. So there was one on the right-hand side that went into um, another room that was used like an office. Or you'd go straight ahead into the main part of the house. And in that part, there's a living room, not very big, and a sun porch attached to it, a fully enclosed sun porch. Nice. And on the far uh, right wall, there's a set of stairs that goes upstairs. Mm -hmm. You go upstairs and there's... um, a bunch of doors you're just you're basically standing on a on a uh, you go right upstairs straight onto this just a sort of piece of wood you're on <laughs> and you're surrounded by doors it's called a landing yeah but it wasn't i don't know i think of landing as a somehow being like having some light <laughs> and this was oh. like you would be, if all the doors were closed it was pitch black oh wow so the doors there was um a bedroom on the left hand side mm-hmm. another bedroom on the left hand side Straight ahead was the bathroom. On the right-hand side was the master bedroom. And then another door led to another bedroom. Mm -hmm. So it's a big um, property, big house. I took the master bedroom and the bathroom, and I made sure all the other doors were closed. As soon as I went into the house, I did feel a little creeped out. But I kind of just chalked it up to being in a new place and, you know, living on my own, essentially for the first time, like really, really living on my own. Um, And I just sort of brushed it off. I was like, well, I'm here now, whatever. (laughs) Keeping in mind, when I was at Bible school in Toronto, the two buildings we used for, or the four buildings actually, that we used for the Bible school were old mansions, which had some pretty heavy spiritual energy. So I was coming naturally from that, and it was bad. It was dark energy. You so, probably took it with you. Oh, thanks for that. No, I did not. <laughs> um, so coming from that, I was already, I guess, a little bit traumatized by it. I don't know. Anyway. Do you have PTSD? Uh, from ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Probably. Um, so coming from that, that's that's sort of what I was walking into. I moved in, but I really wasn't home very much. I was traveling around the county a lot, going to all the different churches, doing youth group events, having dinner at people's houses, because that's what you did. Um, Staying over at my friend's place, again, thank you, Stephanie and her family, Mm -hmm. um, because they were always good for a meal and a bed. They're like, oh, don't worry about it, just stay here. And, you know, and I found myself doing that without really having an explanation of why. This is also... (laughs) 
Subconsciously. Subconsciously, mm-hmm. I knew why. Now, here's another little fun part. I got my very first cell phone. Wow. Uh, I know. What year was this? 1992, 93. Was it Motorola flip phone? It was a flip phone. I wasn't made of money. Oh, my gosh. It was a Radio Shack. Oh, gosh. Um, it was a brick, brick phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> and it had a little leather case are. on it. Ooh. Oh, it was so fancy. Anyway, the problem was where my house was, yeah, no reception. Of course not. So the phone was Pretty essentially useless. useless. I could use it on the road. And it, to our listeners who are younger, these things didn't have the ability to text. Oh, yeah. And we didn't have computers with internet and we didn't have anything like that. So just so you, you know. You had a send and end button. You did. That was <laughs> you, it. You, you couldn't did. even text message. Uh-uh. So this is sort of what I'm living with. So um, I'm in the house. Everything's okay. Um, I did feel creepy. Sometimes I would hear noises in the house and I'd be like, well, I don't really, it's not my house. I don't really know. I went in the basement one time and because the chimney runs up the center of the house, it runs all the way from the basement. And so what that means is you can never see the entire basement. Wow. It's all open. But you're never going to be able to see every corner at the same time. That's fair. Because yeah. there's a chimney the and chimney would be an oil-burning furnace in the middle blocking everything. Hmm. The other thing I noticed about the house, I could never get the living room and the stairwell above 55 degrees. Ever. That's cold. I brought in a propane heater that you're not supposed to use indoors. And I fired her up in the living room. Wow. It still wouldn't go above that temperature. Hmm. And I'm like, huh. Was it drafty? No. But I'm like, oh, well, old houses, bad insulation. That's yeah, weird. That's However, my bedroom had a little electric heater and it stayed warm all the time. Um, the bathroom, same thing. Not a problem. The main kitchen, not a problem. But the living room and the stairs, always freezing. Just always. <laughs> even as I found out later, even in the summer, it was always freezing. But I just sort of chalked it up to... It's hard to explain. When you actually find yourself living in a haunted house... You are so eager to dismiss things mm-hmm. yeah, and explain things away that you never really put the full picture together. And as you will see, it took me quite a while to put the full picture together. No, it's difficult to, cool to acknowledge things. It is, and especially when they're things you have no power over. I think humans want to reason through things. So if we hear a bump in the night, it's... You know, just you just wake up and say, oh, something fell down. You know, you, you try to reason through it, not not that there's anything supernatural going on. And that's why I'm so grateful we have cats now. Yeah, let them handle it. <laughs> you, well, it. we hear thumps and we're like, oh, yes, silly cats. Randy. Yeah, that's right. Um, So the only other thing that bothered me about the house at this early stage was every morning I would come out of my room and go into the bathroom and every single morning one of the bedroom doors would be ajar oh wow even though i made very sure partly to conserve heat of course i made sure all the doors were closed all the time no it was a cold ghost it needed some heat apparently but i did not care for that i did not like that no why would you no not cool um in short order i got a cat i got a little ginger kitten Oh, is that the tabby? Yeah, named Eli. Oh, okay. Right. And he was my best friend, and um, he would play fetch, and he would um, just hang out with me like a dog. He very early on refused to go downstairs, because I tried putting his litter box in the basement. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't happening. Oh, gosh. This is the one that... Mm-hmm. That sad cat. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. So I ended up moving his litter box to a corner of the kitchen, because quite frankly, I didn't want to go down there either. Mm-hmm. I'd gone down in the basement one time to do laundry. And I was so uncomfortable down there and felt so creeped out that I just did laundry at Stephanie's house from then on. That I literally never went down there again. That makes sense. Yeah. That was like my, my laundry room in Prince George. I couldn't stand being down there. Well, didn't all, you ever. just run in and run out kind of yep. thing? Yeah. Yep. Flip them over, throw them. In. I, didn't, I didn't fold them downstairs. I threw them in the, the basket and ran upstairs as fast as human. Yeah. Possible. And I would slam that door. Yeah. In the, the rec room. I would Well, not. there was a door at the very bottom of the stairs, but you had to walk all the way down the stairs to get to the door and then open the creepy door and then go into the basement. So mm. it was pretty awful. I, I remember explaining everything. Oh, basements are always creepy. And, oh, the cat doesn't like it down there because it smells like oil. Like, I just had all of these wonderful things. So time moves forward. Mm-hmm. I am now getting ready. And I know you will mock me for this. I'm now getting ready to record my 
album. Oh, cool. And I had, I was under a time crunch because I had to basically make demos of all the songs to give to the people who were going to do the backup vocals so Mm -hmm. they would know the songs. Because when you get into a studio, you're paying by the hour. So you want to make sure everybody knows Mm -hmm. what they're doing. I was running out of time. I didn't have enough upbeat songs. So I wrote this really goofy song called I Know the Lord. You can find it on Google Play and (laughs) Spotify. And Anyway, um, I needed to play that song. Sorry, write a song. And I wrote that song very quickly. And it was getting close to midnight one night. And usually if I... What I would do, my, my usual routine was I didn't have TV and there was no computer. So what I'd normally do was if I wasn't at Stephanie's house, Stephanie's family's house, I would um, eat dinner mm-hmm. and then basically just go upstairs and spend the rest of my night in the room. I'd just read or whatever, but I wouldn't hang out downstairs in the house. You wouldn't entertain Ouija boards. <laughs> oh, good no, Lord, no. Not in this house. And the cat was with me too. The cat yeah, was like with course. me. So we just would hang out in the bedroom. Um, so this night it's late, it's almost midnight and I have to record this stupid thing. And for whatever reason, it was warm enough that I was in the sunroom. So I'm at this point, I'm facing the ocean with my back to the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. And I start to record the line. So the lines in the song, uh, for the, one of the verses goes, I will not fear the terror. I will not fear the terrors of night. Mm -hmm. I know the Lord has a hold on me. And it's from a psalm. In the Bible, there's a psalm that says, I will not fear the terror that flies by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. So that to me implies, hey, there's weird, bad things out there. Mm -hmm. So I said, I will not fear the terrors of night. I know the Lord has a hold on me. As I sang that line into my little tape recorder playing my guitar, I felt so strongly, I felt something come down the hill from the forest. Whoa push into the house i could see it in my head and keep in mind i'm still playing the song yeah, and singing yeah. i see it push through the kitchen oh, through the living room come up behind me in the sunroom and rear up and over me probably whatever it was it was touching the ceiling of the sunroom as it reared over me oh, and all i could hear in my head was oh yeah wow i finished the song I hit stop and I booked it upstairs. No kidding. So that was the first time I felt really freaked out, like really unsafe. I had 100%. had a percent. I had a low feeling of terror or, or fear in the house generally, but that I felt like I had pushed something no and I'd, kidding. I'd pushed it too far. That was the same as my experience in Prince George in the, in my bedroom upstairs, which was about my brother's room. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that room went black. Right. And it if I had turned around, which I did not do. Of course not. I think I would have seen something. But from that moment on, Ooh. I didn't feel safe. No kidding. Which was new. Mm-hmm. So after that, I focused on recording the album. I was pretty exhausted most of the time. I was still doing all the uh, county youth work. I was also taking a class during the day um, at the local college and all this other stuff. But I spent as little time as possible alone in that house. (laughs) Um, Makes sense. Yeah. And then um, my album was done. My time was up. I was going back to Toronto. So packed up, was like, see ya, and and got the heck out. How long were you there? Uh, A year. Oh, wow. I was in the house for a year. No. Um, But I I never felt like the house and I were friends. So packed little Eli into his carrier and away Mm. we went. Um... So we end up, um, I end up back in Toronto. Uh, I graduated. I'm a full on youth worker now, and now I just have to wait for a job. And in the meantime, uh, I met my former wife and we got married and we were like, what are we going to do? And I got an invite from the guy who ran the recording studio to come and be like a backup singer, uh, studio musician. Yeah. So if anybody else was recording an album and they needed a backup singer, I was going to be it. Good job. Yeah. Cool. That's fun. Um, I was 23. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, of course. So I ended up coming out and uh, didn't do a whole lot of that as it turned out, but I ended up um, working in a shoe store (laughs) and working in a hotel as banquet staff. And you didn't come out 
the right way. How do you mean? Well, he said, <laughs> I'm coming out. Oh. <laughs> so I couldn't help that. I had to jump on it. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, That's... we needed comic relief at some point. No I... kidding. <laughs> so that that well, poor good house. good news. It gets worse. Oh no. <laughs> so again, we needed somewhere to live, and so oh, this gosh, house was still available. Back? Yes. No. Yes, because oh, well, gosh. as creepy as it was, nothing really, really overt had happened, and so I thought, oh well, it's not that bad, and it's cheap. Because again, surprise, surprise, uh, like eight months later, it was still available. Of course. Because someone had just moved in and moved out again. Yeah, that was just like Killarney Drive. Yeah. The bottom was never rented. Oh, FYI for our listeners. Yes. Uh, it didn't sell and now it's back off the market again. Yeah. That's twice in the last nine months. There's a little update from a former Ghost in My House episode. It's yeah. uh, with the, the Prince George episode. Yeah. yeah. It did not sell. It did not sell. And everything is selling up here. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So yeah. this is listed twice now mm-hmm. and didn't. It, the first time it expired and it lapsed yet again. I, I just wanted to put that out there. There so, you go. That's cool. If to you know. need a creepy house, just feel free to reach Prince George reach Carney out. Drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's it's like this place he's discussing. It it's evil. Well, this place is this gets even wilder. Move into the house, uh, now married and living in the house, and um, right away, I notice there's a strange change in the house. I had also never mentioned to anybody how creepy I thought the house was because I thought they'd think I was crazy. So mm. I never told anyone. Of course not. So we're in the house. I think you're crazy. <laughs> we, yeah, and we'd be like sleeping or in in the bed, and we would hear. Um, sometimes the first time it happened, we were in bed. It was like Saturday morning, pretty early, and we hear a car drive up the very long driveway. Hmm. Again, very hard to not know. No kidding. Car drove up the driveway, and then we heard slam, slam of car doors right outside the house. Policemen. We get up. We look. Nothing. Oh, wow. There's no one there. There's no tracks in the snow. Nothing. And we are kind of like, oh, that's weird. We must have imagined it. Because, again, that's what you do. Well, yeah, if there's snow, it would be quiet. Right. So it must have been loud. So then um, we kind of go, oh, that's odd. That's weird that we heard that. And then we move on with our lives and don't really think about it. (laughs) Yeah, as you do. Uh, As you do. And then it started to happen maybe... Once or twice a week, sometimes first thing in the morning, sometimes the middle of the afternoon, you'd be in another part of the house. Oh, somebody's here. And you'd go and you'd look. No, no one's there. Wow. Then we started to hear the exact same sound um, of a door opening. And when we'd come downstairs, the door between the new part, the kitchen, and the old part, which was the original back door of the house that now went into the living room, would be open. Now, what made this weird was because the kitchen was better built and we could never keep the living room warm, we always kept that door shut tight. Makes sense. Right? But we kept finding it open. Sometimes we'd be in bed and we'd hear it go. So we're like, oh, weird. Oh, well, old house, crappy doorknobs. (laughs) I know it sounds insane. Did it have crystal doorknobs? No, it didn't. It had metal. Oh, my grandmother's did. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, it was a very classy house. That is very classy. No. But it was big. <laughs> I think, actually, you know, now you say that, one of the doors, I think, did. But this yeah. was an old exterior door. So oh, right. It right. would be so be brass. Yeah. So that happened. Was it kind of an oblong shape? Yes. 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 Okay. I know exactly. You know, yeah. Now. So that door was, we would find it open, maybe again, once or twice a week. Then, again, we just sort of explained it away. And then we started hearing footsteps on the stairs oh, we gosh. would we would hear the risers creaking oh, and it was a very deliberate and you could almost hear like a shoe hitting the wooden stairs now problem with this was the stairs had carpet on them at this point um but it sounded like someone walking up a set of stairs but here's the weird part it would only ever go up halfway that's what i thought when i hear the clicking door and the clop 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 Michael Jackson, so I popped in my head. No, that actually makes sense. But, <laughs> but no, that was not what was happening. I, I, I guess it wasn't Thriller. <laughs> well, well, it, it kind of thrilled was. you, but it kind of not, was. In a, not a positive way. Not in a good way. <laughs> so um, we start hearing all of this, and I mentioned to someone, finally, 
I said, yeah, you know, there's some odd things happening at this house. And um, now New Brunswick is very interesting. The people are very, very friendly. Yeah. But if you're not from there, oh, you're, I've heard. you're not clicky. from there. It's very clicky. I remember they referred to one guy. His name was David and they called him David from away. And I talked to him one time at an event and I'm like, why do they call you that? And he goes, oh, because I'm not from here. I'm from another part of New Brunswick. And he was only there at least 15 years. 32 oh, years okay. he'd been so, married to this see, woman. My point exactly. But they still call this David from away. So right. this is the kind of culture you're in, right? Super friendly people, but they're definitely, if you're a maritimer, you're, you're a maritimer. And you're that's, a foreigner. Otherwise. That's, that's your loyalty. So when I mention this to some people, one or two people would completely blank, go blank in the face. Like they weren't going to tell me anything. But other a couple other people would kind of smile or go, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, but I've heard some things but they wouldn't ever give me anything else and i was too young to push i'd push now but i was too young then why not yeah i, I just yeah i would no, I, I get that no it wasn't like you know why not now oh I mean, yeah 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 we yeah, have yeah. left less days ahead than we do behind exactly we're gonna be ghosts ourselves pretty yeah, soon probably probably with rex and randy yeah <laughs> so um when um again all the doors almost seem to take turns opening on the upper landing and then we had this one day and everything went weird um the vacuum cleaner turned on by itself oh, um gosh. i was working on something on the piano for a music thing and i was i had the piano digitally hooked up to the computer and the mouse started moving around by itself again no internet the physical mouse wasn't moving but the pointer on the screen started going around and clicking on things it mm -hmm. was really freaky at the same time the vacuum cleaner started acting weird in the other room how interesting so we kind of came out of the room at the same time and looked at each other and went we should go like we were really feeling like the house was like get out of here so we jump in the car and we head to the local town and uh she goes off to do some shopping <clears throat> i go get a haircut because that's what i needed to do she was picking up groceries and um i met the hair place and uh, it's like one of those old barber shops, you know, like all small towns have them. Everyone goes there. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah. 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 Of course. So I'm there and um, someone says something about uh, haunting or ghosts or something. And I, I don't know why I jumped in there and I said, oh, I think I've got that problem. And they all kind of stop and look at me. Of course. And they're like, well, where do you live? And I told them the name of the house. And they all look at each other. And for whatever reason, they decided to have some pity on me. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, yeah. There was something very unfortunate that happened in that house probably 100 years ago. Naturally. Of course. And I'm like, oh, please do tell me the story. Yeah, no doubt. So they told me the story and I will tell you at the end of it. But needless to say, I was very unhappy and I did not tell my wife because I didn't want her to freak out even worse. No. So we go back to the house and she says something along the lines of, you know, I'm thinking maybe we should move. Now, we'd only been in the house a month. And it's gotten this bad this fast. From what I know, she doesn't acknowledge their existence. So that's quite interesting. It was very much a real thing because you're right. She was not big into that kind of thing at all. Of course not. So she says, okay, I think maybe we should move. And I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. It's getting worse. I think it was six weeks we're in the house. Mm -hmm. And um, well, certainly a lot less than a year. Well, yeah, because I'd lived in it for a year yeah. and I was not great, but I was okay. But it was already a hundred times worse than when I lived there. I had not said anything about the basement, but she went into the basement to do laundry and she came back up and she goes, I'm sorry, I can't go back down there. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah it was that bad. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, uh, you start looking and I will, we got the paper cause that's what you did back then. No Craigslist or anything. We <laughs> had to get the yeah, paper. Of yeah. That's we, right. we drove into St. John. We found a place to live, just a regular old apartment, you know? And um, we were like, yeah, we want to move in. We want to move in. And they're like, okay, you can move in next week because that'd be the beginning of the month. And we're like, fine. We go back to the house again. I have not told her anything. And we start to kind of pack up because we got a week to move. Most of our stuff was already packed up. We hadn't unpacked it yet. So mm -hmm. that was good. But we're packing up the rest of our stuff. So that week, 
Things were pretty quiet until the second last night we were in the house. And we're in bed and we're both reading and the bedroom door is closed. And for the very first time, we hear everything in sequence. We hear the car come up the driveway, oh, wow. slam, slam. And we look at each other. But at this point, we almost ignored that because it happened so much. And then we hear the door open downstairs. And then we hear the footsteps coming up the stairs. And this is the only time it happened. It happened once and that was it. We hear what sounds like someone took 20 phone books and hurled them down in the landing. It went boom wow. and it shook the house. My water glass fell off the nightstand. It, it made the house shake so much. Again, all wooden old house, right? I, that's interesting. I think there's two events happening there. Well, let me tell you what we did. So we heard the bang and I look at her and I say, you want to go check that out? <laughs> And she's like, nope. And I said, me neither. No. So you know what we did? We went to sleep. We did, seriously. Oh, well, yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What do you think was going on? Well, I don't know, but the the timeline with it, something happening a hundred years before, I'm thinking whatever was at the top of the stairs was doing something to the people who were driving the car mm -hmm. pretty close except it was the other way around what yeah so essentially the story was this house had been built for the local schoolmaster right he had a big family so they built him a big house with all those bedrooms him and his family left they got a new school teacher in there but it was a woman she was single and she lived in that house by herself we're very, very close to the American border, mm -hmm. where we were in New what, Brunswick. Maine? Maine. Yeah. So apparently, some guys had escaped prison, stolen a car, oh, gosh. driven up the highway, found this isolated yet highly visible house. Of course. Drove up the driveway, kicked in the back door, and came in. They were coming up the stairs as she was coming down. Which is why it was only ever halfway. Made sense now. Oh my gosh. They then attacked her, raped her, and killed her. Oh no. They did get caught eventually, but it did not change what had happened. So my theory is, when I was living there by myself as just a single guy, she wasn't too upset about it. But when I came back married, I think she had a real problem with it. Makes sense. So, in a way, she kind of drove us out of the house. So, we heard the bang. We went to sleep. We were leaving, like, really quickly. That day, we got the rest of our stuff. And I said to her as we're driving down the very long driveway, I said, whatever you do, don't look back. And she said, why? And I said, I don't know. I just have this feeling. We just can't look back. We have to drive away from this thing. And not look back. And that's what we did. We we stayed at a friend's house of our last night before we got the apartment because neither of us wanted to be in there. This feels a lot like Hill House. It was awful. Oh awful. My gosh. It's the one and only time I've ever like run from something spiritual. And no here's kidding. the other thing. Someone said to me, well, why didn't you, because of course we were a Christian, deeply religious. Um, why didn't you order it out in the name of Jesus or whatever? And I said, you honestly, can't. no, you, you know what? We were renters and i the house knew that yeah and whatever happened in that house far superseded me being there it knew we were temporary whatever it was knew we were there 100 percent temporary and so i don't think there was any hope not that i felt i even could take it on like it was far too angry and powerful for me to deal with i i'm still you know i'm not a ghost investigator I don't go looking for this stuff. If I help a friend out with a weird house and something weird's going on, the best I can do is say, oh, this is what it is. But I don't order anything out. I'm not I'm not tossing my weight around and ordering no. stuff out. 100%. Wow. So it was really awful. I mean, you remember when we were at your house 
uh, your old house and that lady said she was going to light white candles and you were like, oh. Don't do that. No. You're like, you're provoking she did. it. She did. She, she did, did do my, it. And she said upstairs. it got upstairs. It got worse. And I said, that's a bad idea. It's always been confined downstairs. Yeah. And then the she phoned time. us. Remember that? Yeah, she, she did. phoned us. And um, she had lit in the white candles and she was phoning us like two weeks that afterwards. That was when I was there in my bedroom and I, you guys were in the living room yeah. and you guys were talking and I said, I was talking to whatever it was. But the white candles were going, and I said, "Just leave them alone. They have nothing to do with you." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but... then she called us and said, "It's worse, and I don't know what to do." And we were like, "Well, we don't know either." I was trying to say we shouldn't be burning the white candles. Well, it had room. already been done. It, it was you know, too late. It was too late. The only time it ever came up was that time I was telling you that black thing was coming from yeah. the closet in the corner. Yeah, yeah, and it just—I couldn't see. No, I, no. It enveloped when you were talking about the way this thing came up behind, uh, behind you me and, and yeah. over. It engulfs you. Yeah. It's just a hundred percent pure black. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't see. My eyes were wide open. Nope. So um that was it. Um I know the house was empty for the next couple of years because these people were away for I think they were gone for like five years or something. And they tried to rent it and people would stay for a month or two. And then they would leave. And these people were so frustrated. I remember because we had no money and they took our money. They wouldn't give us back oh, our, our our rent for the next month. And it fine. I, I mean, I get it. I understand. That's but. one way of making money is I su- keeping it. I suppose. But um, yeah, it never got any better. And I was so relieved to get out of there and to get into our gross apartment in the city. <laughs> because, hey, it may be gross, but at least... There was nothing else there, you know what I mean? I wonder what was happening out there. That was why I suggested the second events. I don't know about that. I hypothesized about the the car being there, but obviously I got the re- events in reverse order. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But I meant the black thing that came from the forest. I don't know what that was. I never did feel comfortable turning my back on the forest. Like when I would go into the house, I had to kind of go around the back of the house and in through that door into the kitchen. And I never felt comfortable with that forest there. And it was so black out there. Um, At night, there was, I mean, of course, there were no streetlights. It's completely rural. But it was always so dark. And um, it was, um, yeah, I, I guess in some ways, because I lived in that place in Toronto for two years, And had some really scary moments. And I wasn't the only one. Um, And hearing things and and hearing footsteps and things like that. Maybe I had just in some ways thought, oh, well, this is normal. Like, to be fearful in a house is just normal. No, it shouldn't be. No. No, 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 no. I agree with you. But I'm saying it's almost like being in an abusive relationship where you're like, oh, this is normal. They, they're mean to me oh, because... That's, yeah, that's right. That's a form of learned helplessness. Exactly. And I think in a way, because I was in that super volatile spiritual environment for two years, that moving into that house and having it feel unsafe was just, oh, well, this is the way it is. No, it shouldn't be that way. I agree with you, but I think that's what was going on. Hmm. So as far as I know, they moved uh, back into that house, and I wish them all the luck in the world, (laughs) and I'm glad I don't live there, Um, but that is the full story of my time at that home in uh, Charlotte County in uh, New Brunswick, so. Wow, I need to look it up. I want to see this house. I'll show you on Google Maps. I'm so curious. Now. <laughs> All so right, creepy. everybody. Thank you for being with us. We're going to uh, just play our transitional music now. Absolutely. And then we will come back and uh, do all our regular goodbye stuff. So thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Yes, welcome back. We um, are just sort of looking at our um, amazing patrons and setting it up to do the uh, 
be the list and we're just so so grateful for all yeah, of you thank you so much um because of you we can pay our Lipson bill to send the podcast out and right. um all these good things so please if you are thinking about becoming a patron please do we would love to have you we're very grateful and thank you yes the benefits are not just getting to hear our lovely voices more than once every two weeks but yeah, get some merch ghost stories we have heard which we release on the opposite weeks of this podcast yeah you also get some merch everyone loves merch what kind of merch uh well you can get shirts and you can get cups and stickers stickers yeah it's stickers amazing great. everyone loves merch everyone <laughs> loves merch um and uh, once we hit 50 patrons we're at 30 currently right now once we hit 50 we're gonna do an in-depth video for our patrons um of the backyard that we spoke of in mm. our version of ghost or of uh ghost of my house yeah the one here and we're gonna film our backyard and the neighbor's backyard where they actually found the burial the first yeah, the nation's cave. burial sites so that's interesting you might enjoy it and our backyard looks really creepy with all these gary oaks it does um apparently walt disney was inspired by the gary oak uh to surprised. make uh snow snow white's forest we have like 12 of them back there yeah, and you know what? Everyone's like, oh, Gary Oaks, you're so great. And yeah, no, they're nice and all, but um, they're very brittle. The branches messy. break off. Messy. They're, the, they're the only leaves you can't leave down in the fall because they're so acidic, they will burn through the grass. Yeah, they, they're just not helpful. On the other side, though, we've got a wonderful uh, family of squirrels who lives out there. That's right. So that's I've fun. seen some fight. It's really? To watch them Squirrel fight. fights? Yes. <laughs> Because <laughs> they don't really get into scrapping, but they do chase one another around. I've seen that. And do they scream at each other and stuff? Uh, no, they chirp. Oh. I watched them yeah. chirp. And one stood up. Oh. One stood up on its... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, squirrel scrap. How ridiculous. They're fighting over nuts is what they're doing. <laughs> Who doesn't? You're right. Um, so we have some... Um, oh, we have some fun news. Uh, one thing I'm doing is if you've ever heard me talk about our chickens we mm -hmm. had chickens for a while and the raccoons claimed them for their own sadly mm -hmm. it was very awful so i am embarking on a new adventure i'm very excited about it um i'm gonna be uh hatching my own button quail yeah it's kind of cute button quail baby chicks are the size of bumblebees well apparently we're uh, starting a farm in our house like Oh, like that wasn't going to happen? Come on, you live with me. Um, so Fish, bird, cats, you know. My incubator, my incubator showed up on Saturday, and I've got their cage, and I'm picking up the eggs in two weeks. So you'll have to stay tuned for quail conversations when we uh, get the button quails up and running. So that's kind of fun. That's right. Yeah. And we'll be heading up island soon. Yeah. And recording a story up there. So that'll be fun. Yes. Um, and also we had a listener story come in. Yeah. Oh. I didn't tell you this one. Oh, no, you didn't. So Lisa, who you may recall, we interviewed Lisa for the uh, uh, North Shore. North Van. Yes. North Van. Uh, episode with the mall. Um, Lisa is a wonderful friend of the podcast. We love Lisa and um, and Thomas, of course, her amazing yes. husband. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Um, and we're just so thrilled with them. Anyway, she sent me a story this week, and it was so great. Um, or no, she posted it, and I said, "Can I steal that?" And she gave me permission to steal it for the podcast. So she, her dad, has this cake. That his mother used to make him. His mother's been gone many years now. But his mother used to make him this very special cake. And it's a cake he loved and he talked about all the time. And <laughs> So Lisa had sort of figured out the recipe. But he was always like, oh, well, it's good. But it's not quite the same. And she was always really frustrated that she could never get it quite right. So his birthday's coming up. She wanted to make him the cake mm -hmm. and wasn't really quite sure how to do that. And she was sitting there puzzling over the recipe. And then in her ear, as she's literally writing out the recipe, she hears, it's rum, dummy. Oh, wow. That's interesting. And this cake called for half a cup of water in the actual batter. And then it called for water in the glaze. So Lisa's like, oh. So she replaced the water with rum. She made the cake, served it to her dad, who said, oh my gosh, this is it. 
This is the cake. Oh, good. So she got it. So I love that Granny came back from beyond the grave, Mm -hmm. (laughs) not only to call her sweet granddaughter a dummy, but also pass on the family secret that the cake is awesome because of rum. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So thank you for that, Lisa, because that was pretty funny. I loved reading that. Um, otherwise, we would like to say thank you to all of our wonderful patrons. Yes. Um, you guys keep the lights on here, and we're very grateful to you. Um, sometimes, honestly, sometimes when I'm overwhelmed at work, and I'm overwhelmed with trying to write this Calgary book, and I'm overwhelmed with all the ghost walks, and I'm overwhelmed with dealing with crazy Jason, <laughs> I go, you know, maybe we'll just take a break this week and not do an episode. Maybe we'll just let it go. And then I'm like, nope. Because I know that at least 30 of you are supporting us, and I owe it to you. Thank so, you very much. Yeah, sometimes that's what keeps we us going. We do have fun. We, we, are, we actually do have a blast. I'm just kidding. Jason's not completely crazy. Well, he's a crazy monkey. That's my nickname for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Jay, you ready? Yes. We'd like to say thank you to... Alexa. Debbie. Jackie. Charlotte. Julie. Ruth. Rebecca. Mary Frances. Cassie, Gina and Victoria, Sandy, Christopher, David, Ashley, Jeremiah, Mamere, Elizabeth, BB Nix, Melinda, Jordan, Tammy, James, Taya, Evan, Arwen, Steve, Kyle, Catherine, Mary, Myrie, M- Myrie, and Christy. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. I- <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny about that? I spent the entire day, I drove out of our cul-de-sac and I'm like, something looks weird to me. Yeah. And then I realized... He texted me saying I forgot my glasses. I forgot my glasses. So I spent the entire day with no glasses on and then I had to drive home. Um, I should say, it's not like I'm blind without my glasses, just yeah. one eye. I only have a one bad eye. So I just saw everything in 2D today instead of 3D. That was <laughs> kind of what I did. And Kyle, who is one of our... Um, uh, one of our patrons is actually going to help me out with uh, one, uh, Chris's as well, but uh, Kyle's going to help me out with his story for the Calgary book. Fabulous. So yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're looking forward to meeting you guys in August. Yeah, if you're in the Calgary area and you want to say hi, we should set something up, or we can come out to you. Well, no, we will, but I'm saying we'll set something up at like a restaurant or oh, something, I see what you mean. Yeah, and then course. people come and have drinks or something. That'd be fun. If you're interested in doing that. Yeah. Let us know. Sounds good. Yeah, because yeah. if we don't hear from anybody, we'll be like, okay, message received. We're losers. We got it. No worries. <laughs> okay. And we'll move on. But um, <laughs> if you are interested in getting together in Calgary, uh, first two weeks of August sometime, please let us know. We'll make it happen. I'll be doing the photos. Jason will be doing photos. He's basically, we're going to Calgary for two weeks to um, record some stories for the podcast. Yeah. But mainly to take pictures for the Calgary book. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as do any uh, bits of research we need to for the book as well. So we'll be coming down to the U.S. soon again. We did a brief trip just for his 50th, but we will be doing more exploratory. Yes, where we went to the, we went to that sketchy Portland uh, COVID clinic. That was so funny. Oh gosh. (laughs) Thankfully we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, that's done. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Um, What else? Oh, we went to Florence and we mm-hmm. saw the lighthouse. So that mm-hmm. was neat. That was cool too. Fabulous. So we're definitely going to have a story about the Hasita lighthouse. So that'll be fun. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Things to look forward to. Things to look forward to. So yeah, please keep that in mind if you're in the Calgary area. First two weeks of August and you'd like to hang out, just say the word and we will put something together. Otherwise, I want to thank you for uh, coming with us on this journey as I recounted. You know, the older I get, the more I realize just how far in the past... <laughs> All of this really was. It's true, right? Like, I had, um, in my job, I hire people. I hire uh, students for jobs as part of my, my role. So I hire a summer team. And this year, one of the summer team, are you ready for this? They were born in 2002. 2002. Oh, my gosh. 2002. I felt very, wow. very old. I remember when I was a youth worker and I realized it was time to get out of youth That's work. That's almost the Zoomer generation. <laughs> exactly. We just we were just learning about that. Um, I learned uh, when I was a youth worker, I realized I needed to get out of youth work when the kids who were coming to my youth events were born the same year I graduated high school. It was time wow. to go. And now here I am, all these years later, working at the police department and... 2002 i'm like 2002 oh my god what are they four 
Oh, sweet Lord, no, they're 20. They're 20, <laughs> and they have to have a class five, so they have to have their full yeah. license. They have to have their full license. No and graduated they do. license. And they do. It's strange how time goes on. We're so old now. Well, just looking at your CD collection. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Club Cuts. Dance Mix 92. That's 10 years Dance older. Mix. Oh, my know. gosh, that's 10 years older. I know. There were some good songs on that. Oh, though. stop it. Anyway. Rhythm is a Dancer. No, Rhythm is a Dancer was in 90... No, what was what was on 90? They're all terrible, Jason. OPP. They're all terrible. Get ready for this. Two on number CNC two. Music Factory. <laughs> yeah, CNC Music Factory. <laughs> what was that other one? Um, the KLF, um, The White Room. Oh, God. You play that one all the time. It's so weird. Well, it's when I'm concentrating on math and numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's It's... It's it just goes bop 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 bop, so it keeps me in a rhythm to just keep going. Whatever works, whatever works. All right, friends, thank, thank you for you. being with us. Uh, we will see you next time, and don't forget that we are the only podcast that has the actual ghost story with the actual history in the actual place. And hopefully, one day soon, it will be with you. Maybe that place will be with you in Calgary. Yeah, maybe. Who, who can say? All right, friends, take care, and Thanks we'll so talk much. to you later, and we'll see you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.